ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोतम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जाया मुदीरहे नष्ट प्रायेशु अभद्रेशु नित्यं भागवत सेवया भागवती उत्तमा श्लोके भक्तिरभवती नैष्टकी कृष्णाय वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय च नंदगोपकुमाराय गोविंदय नमो नम श्रीमद्भागवतम कैन टू टेन चैप्टर फोर्टी सिक्स टेक्स्ट फोर्टी फोर एवं निशा सा ब्रुवातोर व्यतीता नंद से कृष्णुचार राजन गोप्या समुथया निरूप्य दीपम वस्तुन समभर्यश्च दधिनी अमंथन एवं निशा सा भूतवाति नंद से कृष्ण राजन गोप्या समुथय निरूप्य दीपम वस्तुन संबरश्य दधीन अमंतन एवं निशा सभृतर्वती नंद से कृष्णुचर से राजन गोप्या समुथय निरूप्य दीपा वास्तुन समभ्रश्य दधीनी अमंतन एवं निशसा भूत अर्वती नंद से कृष्णुचर से राजन गोप्या समुथय निरूप्य दीपा वस्तून वस्तून समस्तून संभर्य दधी न मंथन जी जन्मदस 
Evam, in this way, Nisha, the night, Sa, that, Bruvato, as they were both speaking, Vatita, was finished, Nandasya, Nanda Maharaj, Krishna Nucharasya, and the servants, and the servant of Krishna, Udhav, Rajan, O King, Parikshit, Gopya, the coward woman, Samuthaya, rising from sleep, Nirupya, lighting, Deepan, lamps, Vastun, the domestic deities, Samabrayashya, worshipping, Dadini, curds, Amanthan, churned. While Krishna's messenger continued speaking with Nanda, the night ended, O king. The woman of the coward village rose from the bed and lighting lamps, worshipped their household deities. Then they began churning the yogurt with butter. Text 45 as they pulled on churning ropes with their bangled arms, the women of Raja shone with splendor of their jewels, which reflected the lamp's light. Their hips, breasts and necklaces moved about, and their faces, anointed with reddish kumkum, glowed radiantly with the luster of their earrings reflecting from their cheeks. Next verse. As the ladies of Raja loudly sang the glories of lotus-eyed Krishna, their songs blended with the sound of their churning, ascended to the sky and dissipated all the inauspiciousness in every direction. When the godly sun had risen, the people of Raja noticed the golden chariot in front of Nand Maharaj's doorway. Who does this belong to? they asked. Perhaps Akrura has come. He who fulfilled Kamsa's desire by taking lotus at Krishna to Mathura. Purport. The gopis angrily spoke this statement. Text 49, the last verse of this chapter. In he going, is he going to use our flesh to offer funeral oblations for his master who was so satisfied with his service? As the women were speaking in this way, Uddhav appeared, having finished his early morning duties. Purport. This verse reveals the bitter disappointment the gopis felt when Akrura took Krishna away. However, they were pleasantly surprised to see that the unexpected guest is Udhav. Thus end the purports of the humble servants of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, to the 10th canto, 46th chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam, entitled, Udhav Visits Vrindavan. Om Jnana Timirandhasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Vey Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pasyatya Deshatarine Vanchakalpa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhya Evacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namaha Namo Mahavadanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namine Gauratvise Namaha Panchatatvak Makam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Swarupakam Bhakta Vataram Bhaktakyam Namami Bhakta Shaktikam He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi 
राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानु सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय जय श्री कृष्णा चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार श्रीवास आदि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा सो दिस इज वेरी ऑस्पिशियस डे टूडे द फर्स्ट डे दैट वी सिंग द वंडरफुल जगन्नाथ अष्टकम ग्लोरीफाइंग लॉर्ड जगन्नाथ टूडे बींग द Snan Yatra, or which is actually the appearance day or birthday of Lord Jagannath, very auspicious. But as we understand from the scriptures that what is very auspicious for devotees is many times most inauspicious for outsiders. Ya Nisha Sarva Bhutana. What is night for a devotee? is day for a materialist and vice versa so today while we are celebrating the most auspicious snan yatra the world over they are very fearful because today happens to be a very unique combination of friday the 13th which is considered to be a dangerous day i don't know why and happens to be a full moon which adds to the danger as per they what they say is very rare that this combination comes where friday comes on the 13th with a full moon the next time this is going to happen is only in 2098 we may not be there for this next event but so everybody is very scared because friday the 13th itself superstitiously is very very scary day because i don't know what but when that f- comes on a full moon it is double scary so while the world is getting scared everybody is talking about it uh, we are celebrating the most auspicious day of snan yatra so this is the unique thing <laughs> in in devotee circle yesterday people were talking about tomorrow you should reach home early there will be lot of accidents there will be lot of negative energy and all these things well but today is also the day where lord jagannath is appears is tithi so very auspicious so this beautiful verses which are showing a very very deep and a very very elevated topic of shrimad bhagavatam if if you see the human being is one of the most wonderful creations of of god you know of all the creations that the lord has created human being is some something very very special because it is the human being which has the power of feeling willing and uh, showing our emotions the facility of thinking feeling and willing so if you see everyone is filled with unlimited emotions if you analyze how many emotions are there in pe- in people's existence there are unlimited emotions emotions of fear emotions of happiness of doubt so many emotions i think we all are constantly having these emotions and there's constant churning going on and to the extent a particular material stimulus comes in front of us there's this churning of emotion that takes place and a prominent emotion that has that is the right emotion for that particular stimulus comes out and that is what is called behavior right so what is behavior of a person of a human being is nothing but a response of a particular of multiple emotion which are churning in the heart based on a stimulus by a particular material object or particular material situation 
and a prominent emotion which is the outcome of that churning comes out for example you know you, you, it's extremely hot nowadays uh, people are just sweating smelling you know and just so uncomfortable so when you're traveling by a local train you know and with 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 huge crowd there is so much emotion of discomfort of frustration of anger of disgust isn't all these emotions are there what am i doing here and then at that time when somebody stamps your feet uh, it's just oh and in that smelly place you know well somebody is just holding the thing and you are right you are sometimes short so your nose is at the wrong place but <laughs> you can't do anything you you are just you are just you are just so helpless it's unfortunate so the prominent emotion that comes through this material situation is either anger or frustration or disgust there's there's huge fights right so that's the prominent emotion so while we are you know going through this this emotion it is it is something we must understand that the creation of god that that god has created is the human being is a amazing art of of creation of god i was just reading a, a particular book which talks about uh, talking about various phobias that people can have you know there's phobia phobia means fear or disgust now it is i i was completely amazed i'm sure all of you would also be that there are practically 300 to 400 different types of phobias that somebody can have phobia is nothing but emotion that is churned at a particular time when a particular thing happens and the emotion of fear so just to name a few the what what samples as we're going to sample hai ye what samples of phobias can people have which is nothing but emotion there's something what is called ablutophobia what is called ablutophobia which means the fear of washing and bathing I mean, can you imagine a person having a phobia of washing and bathing he just he just gets so fearful phobic to just anything which is washing or clean or bathing there's something what is called chetophobia the phobia of hair i mean you know i i knew i knew of a friend of mine who when i was staying in hostel for a year who had this phobia he was clean shaved by the way completely clean shaved you know and even if there was one hair in the bathroom he would be like oh nikalo nikalo isko nikalo take it out i said well you know it is dirty i agree the hairs are dirty but you know it can't be just but people are phobic to it just just the strand of hair can make it completely you know fearful now this interesting phobia called hegiophobia now none of us should have this by the way hopefully we nobody gets it it is called fear of saints and holy things <laughs> there are people who have hegiophobia who just are so fearful of saints or sadhus and anything holy they just they just can't deal with it and we understand why some people to some extent or the other to some degree or the other they, they don't even when you go to a drink book marathon give them a book and they just Shh, don't, don't, don't touch me don't touch this book why because they may be having to some small degree or the other this this phobia of dealing with anything which is holy they say it is satan they say it is it is unholy huh? there is something what is called eliogrophobia this is very interesting it is fear of cats now you know what is a cat and i mean all of us we go around and there are so many cats just going around I and mean, nobody really gets scared but you know something some of the most powerful people in this world they had this phobia there would be a, f- a, a fearful experience to these people they were the you know the people like napoleon hitler mussolini and julius caesar they all four had this phobia of cats they they could they could kill lakhs of people they could be powerful but a cat would sh- send a shiver in their spine that was how phobic 
this this people they are powerful dictators but they had this unique phobia and last is uh, tapiophobia the last I mean, many of many the list you can go to the internet and see all the um, interesting phobias but this tapiophobia fear of being buried alive now then then george washington had this phobia and he mentioned that when i die don't bury me until it is 2 or 3 days to make sure i'm really dead because if i'm still alive when you bury me I, it was it, he mentioned in his will he mentioned to his secretaries he mentioned to his wife everyone knew that please bury me after few days of my dying because he was so phobic to being buried alive strange things but the thing i'm trying to drive is that this this emotions are so very powerful and they are very real to the people who have those emotions it might find very we might find very strange these emotions but they are very real to people who have these emotions so 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 the behavior of a of a person is nothing but a blend of all these emotions and that's why we understand that every behavior if we see, we can see from two perspectives every reaction to a particular stimulus by us, by by somebody one is on the realistic side on the idealistic side i would say not ideal idealistic side that yes ideally this is not right you know for example i'm just i was just reading this particular last line of the purport is that the gopi said easy year come to take our flesh and offer it to his uh, to, to to his master's funeral now that his master is very happy and skilled that is what gopis are telling about akrur which we know that it is false akrur has not come they are wrongly saying this statement it is a false it's a wrong judgment hmm? so from the idealistic side you can say well what is this the gopis are wrongly they are not even waiting to really see who has come hmm? as it was a wonderful custom as we all have this custom that the person whom we like we want to keep a track of what's happening with that person hmm? or, or who is who is in his room or where is he naturally our spiritual master we want to know what's happening similarly the brind brindavan everybody wanted to know what's happening at the house of nanda maharaj because that's that was the focus point of vrindavan and when they got up in the morning they saw this golden chariot i said oh there's a golden chariot and for them chariot meant guess imagine the phobia that they had for akrur <laughs> the reason i talked about phobia is because they were so very fearful of akrur because there was a chariot which came to vrindavan which completely changed their life permanently it was never the same after that chariot left that was a chariot of akrur so any chariot it gave a very 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 negative feelings in the heart of the gopis why do you think that you know when when our rickshaw sometimes go or our car sometimes go why do you think that the dog runs after the rickshaw or car i mean we see a, bah, 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 and they run sometimes we wonder that how foolish and there is also a proverb the dog barks the caravan passes that means he said that the proverb is used that don't worry about people just speaking just carry on with your work the dog barks nobody stops right no car stops to say oh why the dog is barking so heavily the car just goes and ba 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 and really sometimes you see the dogs are desperate they just go with such vengeance they bark and then they follow quite far and then they are overpowered by the car and then they go but if you analyze huh, the reason is because either in their life or in the life of somebody that they know somebody has died below a car somebody has been trampled below a car so they are reacting to that feeling hmm? i in, in in vrindavan i was in in barsana many years back and there was this this uh, this cow in every truck that would pass she would just run so heavily almost getting crushed by the truck till the time she was she had to be constantly tied up and i was feeling so i said she would just run so vigorously we cows don't run so heavy i mean they are heavy bodied but she would run with as much as speed she could and then they i said because her calf was killed by a truck 
That's why this, this feeling she has. So again I'm saying the reaction to whatever person does is based on the emotion that is churned, based on previous experiences in this life or in the previous lives. So, so let us understand there is one side of dealing or rather reacting or rather judging a person's behavior from the idealistic side and say well this is wrong the gopis are wrongly judging a crude because he was not there also it is Uddhav who has come and they are speaking something as he said this was reveals the bitter disappointment and they are quite bitter about things right they are saying that you know that why I either in, in, in Hindi it will sound very sweet more than English has he come to take our flesh and offer it to his master you can imagine the emotion that they have but if you see from the humanistic side and that is an important discussion today one is the idealistic side other is the humanistic side and then when you see all the emotions why they spoke what they spoke not just what they spoke. Hmm? Many times we just say, what did you speak? That is what is what I understand. Right? People say, I don't care. Aapne kya balwa mere ko? Kiya. Right? So that is a very, very superficial and not, not really deep understanding of things. You know, many years back, you know, when my brother was becoming a devotee, Dwarkadish Prabhu, you know, he was becoming a devotee and I'm talking about the mid 80s. And, uh, you know, we were, me, I mean, my, my parents and myself, we have a family of four. And my parents were really worried what is happening to, to this person. He, he's, he's becoming a doctor. They have spent so much of energy to make him a doctor. And suddenly he starts going to these programs. <laughs> at, at one point he said, you know, he's going to Bangalore for a, for a medical conference. And my father comes to meet him at the train, you know, to just... And then he says that the whole train, he's not there. What happened? And he was worried. He, went, he goes to his hostel. I said, where is, where is, where is this person? I'm his father. I said, because the, the Bangalore train was in the evening. And the people in the hostel said, well, he, his light was on in the early morning and they left in the early morning. And my father said, what? Early morning? And the only train early morning which was going was to Kolkata. <laughs> and then... Event and that was the 1986, the 500th anniversary of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's appearance and big festival in Mayapur. And and my father realized that my brother is in Mayapur instead of <laughs> Bangalore. Of course, nothing wrong with my brother. I mean, he, you know, at that time that was the right way of of dealing with the parents because if he told the truth, they would be finished. He could not go. But at that time, my father straight went to the there was no this temple there was this Radha Ras Bihari Mandir which was so he met two of the devotees whom, whom my they, my brother was getting preached by brahmacharis I won't name them huh? you, one of them you know very well huh? Sukhdev Goswami Maharaj by the way so he went and uh, you know he was a brahmachari uh, Srinivas Acharya and he, he unfortunately for him my father met him right at the entrance of the, of the temple he was going and my father caught his collar so what are you doing with my son? And he spoke very harshly. Very harshly. And then later on, many things, they would speak harshly about devotees. But you know, later on, they became devotees, my parents became devotees. And they both left in wonderful Krishna conscious spirit. So, if from the idealistic point of view, they did something wrong. But if you understand the emotion that they were going through and the reason why they spoke so harshly, because they were not knowing what's happening to their son. So the point that we want to drive here is the desire of being judgmental is so very strongly present in all of us. Hmm? To, to judge people. Uh, that, oh, he's like this. Uh, because why does this desire to judge people come? Right? Right in the first day of Krishna consciousness, uh, we start judging people. Right? moment you come, this is a nice person. This temple is not good. This is bad. So judging, 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 judging. Why is it? Because judgment, if, you, if I was analyzed, if you analyze also, we, we, we realize that judging somebody is a powerful way to satisfy your false ego. Because you feel that here I am. Nobody has asked your judgment, but you feel nice. 
as you say tera kisna we are no nobody is asked your opinion by the way my friend but still you just be happy to judge people because it gives you feeling because who are the judges if you see him in a normal competition who is made a judge is it some uni, a junior ordinary person the judges are usually people who are senior respectable experienced people they are made judges that these three people are judges because they are experienced people and they are the right people to be judges so being a judge is a very very high position and and realistically speaking only krishna can be the judge because only he is perfect is is aparushya is achuta is adokshaja he is beyond his material senses he is he is not touched by any human by any human feelings a purusha achuta he is infallible so only krishna can be the judge and at the most yamraj who is given the service by krishna to be the judge it is it is krishna is empowered here you be the judge you judge people and you that's your service and the guru that becomes a judge on behalf of krishna he has to judge his disciples judge his followers but being a judge is a very lofty position it's a very very high pressure job <laughs> i mean i remember you know many years back i'm sure all of you has play cricket we used, we, maybe we still play cricket but we used to definitely play cricket so you know i remember in, in our team nobody wanted to be be the umpire you know we we have this umpire when, when we didn't have professional umpires so one of us would become umpire and there would be other 11 people who play the cricket but umpiring is was was a very dif- boring and a very difficult thing because when there was a appeal for somebody being out it was all 11 people said how is that out i mean we just the everybody is looking at the umpire and he is like and this one finger makes the whole judgment right you you, you have seen in cricket how there is a heavy when there is a pressure match and a pressure situation in a match and everybody every small judge decision can change the whole way the match is the umpire and that's why they nowadays they have the third umpire sitting in the in the pavilion because they they see through the video uh, you know what exactly whether there was a cut or there was some something touched the stumps or something like that because being a judge is very difficult because you we are all human beings error is human right so it is difficult but we find it very very enjoyable especially when we come to krishna consciousness because we feel that we have the position to make judgments which is very very dangerous so so when we think of judgments why have you you know why are we judgmental is because of false ego because of desire to be to be prabhu but how not to be judgmental because jesus christ said very clearly judge not for thou shall not be judged right so how can how can we not be judgmental what is the feelings what are the emotions what are the understanding we should have because it is very dangerous because moment you judge krishna is going to judge you you know sometimes it is it is even human behavior right when somebody is very very finicky about things then when you deal with people then that person when he starts dealing with you he also becomes very finicky with you right he said you you try to be too smart i'll be too smart with you also like i remember you know we were going together two of two of two of us one of my friends and uh, you know one one ticket collector asked for it for the pass he said pass dikhao pass dikhao so then i showed him my pass and then my friend showed my friend was little uh, not a devotee i'm just in college he was little extra smart he said aapka pass dikhao pehle he asked the tc that show me your because you might be a fake tc he didn't say that but show me your so tc are supposed to show so he showed but with that he had this vengeance he he felt offended so then he said then the friend showed him the pass and he was like take this and unfortunate for my friend his pass had expired <laughs> he didn't know it you know he just showed it so immediately this guy just caught him aaja bachcha abhi abhi now pass khatam ho gaya that guy was shocked hmm? 
so 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 then <laughs> it, it it took him 3 hours to get released from this tc because he put all his vengeance on him i said you guy you are trying to check me now i will do the needful for you right so when you judge somebody the other person feels naturally that i will going to judge you also when the time comes when 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 somebody is wrongly judged in the paper and you get wrong marks when he becomes a teacher he does the same thing <laughs> yeah because that's natural and not natural it is unnatural but it is humanly natural spiritually not natural similarly krishna you know he is lenient you know when we are lenient with others and strict with ourselves but when you are strict with others the krishna becomes strict with us i so, said oh you want to judge everybody that's why jesus christ said judge not for thou shall not be judged so the, the first reason is that we have to understand jesus christ gave a, gave a gave a weight not to be judgmental he said thou shall judge not for thou shall not be judged and in the beautiful story where he said let he who without sin cast the first stone beautiful story we all know everybody was trying to stone that prostitute and the prostitute came running to jesus christ jesus christ said made this one simple statement let he who is without sin cast the first stone and nobody because they were honest luckily at that time <laughs> luckily they said oh and then they they put the stone down it is very well shown in that movie jesus of nazareth so they they see they were angry on the prostitute they wanted to stone her to death but then realize oh psh, and they threw it down so you can judge others if you are flawless yourself the first powerful reason not to be judgmental we hear many times that that you are we are we should be so busy to see the faults of ourselves because we are honeycombed with so many faults of ourselves we should have no time to judge others so first reason is that we are not without sin we should be just there are so many things that we need to sort out with and as as they say please mind your own business let us really mind our own business to find our faults we have a long way to go second is a very very important is as we discussed briefly but to to address this point more specifically try to understand the other person and the situation as i said why a person does what he does that means be very sensitive in your dealings a devotee when is when we talk about being devotee being being transcendental does not transcendental does not mean that he becomes insensitive many times we decode the word transcendental to mean very insensitive well, i am transcendental that means our husband not taking care of his wife what how do we describe him prabhu he is very transcendental he is a fool he is not transcendental he is a idiot he is not transcendental transcendental is something very divine right so 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 we must understand that we have to be very very sensitive when we deal with people krishna consciousness means all about sensitive behavior with with everybody so as we grow in our krishna consciousness if we are not properly practicing bhakti then we will see our sensitivity reducing we will have the my way or the highway attitude to do things my way or just get going and we have seen people leaders becoming like that but as we grow in a krishna consciousness if we understanding that krishna is a doer i am simply a servant if we are in the mood of being the humble servant of servant of servant then we become more and more and more sensitive in our dealings and then when we are sensitive then we will always put ourselves in other person's shoes and i i i have tried this so many times you know by the by the mercy of spiritual master there is some understanding that we get to deal with people and putting ourselves in other person's shoes and nine if not 10 out of 10 times i have seen that the person the way he behaves is not much his fault 
there's always some reason why a person behaves the way he behaves. Wrongly behaves, I mean. So that's why, if you're sensitive, you understand, then there's no question of being judgmental. So the next thing comes is, you convert unnecessary judging into constructive criticism. Sometimes we have to judge. But that is not judging. But that's converting judgment into a constructive criticism. That is, there's something what's called destructive criticism, which is prajalpa. That means saying about something, uh, about somebody to the wrong person at the wrong time, in the wrong, wrong situation. That's destructive criticism. When somebody is not really bothered about that and you give that detail to that person, that criticism is of no use. But to have constructive criticism, to speak to the right person at the right time, at the right situation, that is. So convert this judgment into constructive criticism is another powerful way to really, uh, you know, not being judgmental. And it is also, it is, it is said that, I was, I was speaking to somebody, and uh, you remember Peter Burwash? He, he was, he, he comes to the hospital, and we just happened, I had to spend 10 minutes with him. And we were talking about relationships. And then he made a very amazing statement. He said, everyone has a right to be what they are. So why should you bother about relation? Everybody has the right, whether they are right or wrong, that's not different, but they have the right to behave the way they are. If you are in a position of authority, then you can use your constructive criticism or whatever way to correct them. But otherwise, how many times when we make a judgment of people, 9 out of 10 times we are making judgment of people whom we don't really need to make judgments about. If you see a Congress party bekar hai, a politician bekar hai, who are you to judge somebody? Maybe they are useless. That is that is true, no doubt. <laughs> no? But but do we have? I'm just giving a general example. We just are making comments about so many people who are just beyond your 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 reach, beyond your your circle of influence. This temple is useless. You know, it's all Maya, me, all those. These Brahmacari people are all crazy. A griest. I mean, where where did you get this right? to make judgments and that to collective judgments about people. Now, one temple, I either the sub blog Maya me. I mean that's a powerful judgment you are making. And please understand any judgment you make, the gopis when they make this judgment, they are divine personalities. I mean their their judgment I, I was analyzing their judgment is based upon intense attachment to Krishna. And our judgment is based upon intense attachment to false ego. To gopis, whatever they are judging, because they are so intensely attached to Krishna. Can you imagine? I mean, we cannot imagine what sort of attachment the gopis had. Krishna is such a personality that he, that we can become, he makes himself attached to other people whom we de- they deal with in a very easy way. Krishna is so attaching. I mean, we get attached to Krishna so easily. Just recently I was, uh, you know, in, in, I was traveling from, by flight to one place to the other place. You know, from Moscow to Anapa. Uh, and, uh, you know, there we were going and there was one person, tall man, smart looking. I said, Hare Krishna. And he, he said, are you devotees, Hare Krishna devotees? Said, yes, we are devotees because we are this Kantimala and everything. So are you also devotee? Are you going to Anapa? Because there was a retreat in Anapa. I said, are you also devotee going there? I said, no, I'm not devotee. Then we, we, we finished that talk. And then we sat and strangely, this person had the seat next to me. <laughs> he was doesn't get to the seat. So we started talking. And he said, he used to be a devotee from a place which is next to Anapa called Novrasisk. There's a place in, in Russia. He said, I used to go to the temple. There's a beautiful temple of, in Novrasisk. He said, I used to go to this temple and I was chanting as I was discussing with him. And, uh, you know, he was talking to me and he was sipping a particular beverage that they serve which we, which we don't consume obviously <laughs> it was one, some sort of alcohol he was sipping and he was talking to me I said I was I, you know I used to go to this temple at one point I chanted 8 rounds I said oh really and then you know he was sipping and then he said uh, what is that you know he suddenly he just turned to me and said what is that uh, song what is the song I said which song uh, I said 
because he was chanting almost 6 7 years back he said that song and then he said shri krishna chaitanya prabhu nityananda shri advaita gadadhar shiva sadi gaur bhakta vrinda i said wow you know this this is wonderful now for us it is normal but please understand a person who was who has left krishna consciousness 7 to 8 years back he was he was in singapore working in a ship earning tons of money he was in merchant navy making lot of money and then suddenly he turned to me again he said that i am trying to remember that song that song of a small god i said what is the song of the small god i was trying to get all the songs out of him i said which are the songs you know i said he had the song of small god i said what do you mean small god i said damodar ashtakam namo vishwaram sachit so no 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 not that then he said namaste narasinghaya pralad lad i said he called pralad marad the song a small god and he sang the whole narsingha prayers he said i am singing these prayers after 8 years he sang it from from beginning to end perfectly and while he was singing please understand he was sipping that beverage pralad lad <laughs> and eating something obnoxious and i was i was thinking that and then he said you know something the most thing that i just can't forget in the temple i said what is it what is it i was trying to just revive his memories you know it was nice to see somebody reviving he was he was seeing showing his attachment to krishna i said that chapati i said the chapati which i ate in the temple that flat thing and he said you know what i told him where am i from my place where i come from is chapati <laughs> so by the way you know he he comes to bombay he ships sometimes comes to bombay i told i invited him let's see whatever but from this he was doing ekadasi he was chanting 8 years back but from this i realized that once you get attached to krishna you can't just give him up you just that that intense remembrance is there can you imagine the attachment the gopis had for krishna if this person while he is sipping that beverage and eating obnoxious thing he is still remembering krishna consciousness that he did 7 years ago can you imagine the attachment the gopis had for krishna with unalloyed love completely meant for krishna so when they speak what they speak we will analyze that and we understand that they are absolutely because we are we are not here to judge the gopis we are just trying to understand how we should not be judgmental in our situation and how it is it is so very important that lord chaitanya mahaprabhu when sachi mata wrongly judged advaita acharya hmm? we, we know the story that Vishwaroop was going to Advaita Acharya every day, spending hours, and then he took sannyas, and then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Nimai he took sannyas, and then Sachi Mata said that Advaita he is not Advaita he is is Dvaita is I mean is full of dualities. He made this statement, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said this is this is aprad, and Mahaprabhu made sure that Sachi Mata took the dust of Advaita's feet when he was unconscious in ecstasy one one kirtan to make sure that she is relieved of this aprad that she had caused for wrongly judging Advaita Acharya, just to show us not that Sachi Mata had any aprad; she is the mother of the universe. But to show us the importance of not being judgmental. So, so let us all very, very seriously take this very important aspect of not being judgmental in our Krishna consciousness, hmm? because our judgment is always based on attachment to a false ego. But judgment, when we give up our complete false ego, then we can be judgmental. But by that time, nobody can judge because uttam adhikari don't judge; <laughs> they see everything wonderful, right? So that is something very, very important to really learn from these beautiful verses of. The, of the gopis that they are talking about uh, uddhav and then of course krishna consciousness is all about surprises you know that you expect something and something wonderful happens you know that they were expecting akrur and then he has come to and they were all having such bitter disappointment and then what they see and we will see in the next chapter they see uddhav who is dressed like krishna who looks like krishna hmm? and they start they immediately go to adudhav they collect next to him and then there's a beautiful discussion amongst amongst the with the gopis and adudhav hmm? so krishna consciousness is all about surprises we should never judge a situation and get despondent again being despondent is also being judgmental that this doesn't work 
just the other day I was reading, I'll just end with the last story. The other day I was reading a beautiful uh, episode in Prabhupada's life. Prabhupada wanting to, was desperately wanting to print this Bhagavad Gita. And there was no publisher who was ready to publish it. And Prabhupada would give this task to one devotee, to the other devotee. And when the devotee got the task, he knew that this is a task for failure. One after another, one after another. And then, so many devotees tried, but nobody wanting to print Bhagavad Gita. They were not wanting. So then the task was given to Brahmanand Prabhu. And then he said, Brahmanand said, oh, this is, that means I'm going to fail. <laughs> this is a short, short road to failure. It is not happened. Suddenly from, from somewhere they got a mail. Uh, and the mail, it was, it was from the company called Macmillan Publishing House. And Prabhupada had recorded a particular uh, you know, album. Uh, you know, he had sung Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. So that album was recorded and somebody from Macmillan Studio, or Macmillan Publishing House, not Studio, but Macmillan Publishing House, had asked for a copy of that album. So they were supposed to just send it by post. Prabhupada said, don't give it by post, go and meet this person personally. So Brahmanan took that, 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 that album, that, that uh, what is it called? Record, record. And he went to meet that person personally. And he was hoping that this person is somebody big. But as to his, to his utter uh, disappointment, this person was an ordinary clerk in the accounts department. <laughs> so, so he had asked for this. So he gave this, this, this record and uh, the clerk gave the money. And he said, is there any way, you know, we, we have, I have my guru. Prabhupada told him that you go and tell that you have a guru who wants to publish this Bhagavad Gita. So Brahman said, well, who is going to... So he was despondent, he was judging. But he was not really seeing what Krishna has in store. So he said, by any chance, you know, he was not saying, what can be a success in this encounter, what can he do? But he just spoke. He said, by, you know, I have a guru, and he wants to print this Bhagavad Gita. Is there any way you can help? He said, well, uh, you know, there is a whole department of, of books, and the head of this spiritual religious books is somebody... You know, well, he gave the name, and while he was giving the name, the door opens, and here comes the head of the of the publishing house in charge of the religious books. Just see how what is in store. Just like expecting Akrur, and here comes Uddhav. Similarly, he was expecting nothing, and here comes this publisher, and and the accountant said, "Well, you know, here is a person who has a guru who wants to print Bhagavad Gita." And that publisher was so ecstatic. He said, we have printed all religious books. We were looking for the manuscript of Bhagavad Gita. We don't want to even see it. We will print it right away. He said, we don't even want to see it. I mean, usually they scan through it. You know, we, we know what publishing is all about. We are, we are hearing what, what uh, you know, people are going through to release a book. One time, two times, months and months to really change and change to publish something. We are there. We don't want to even see. We'll publish it. Can you imagine that this is the surprises in Krishna consciousness? That Krishna has some amazing surprises in store for us. Hmm? So let us not be judgmental. A crazy Peter was a person who was crazy. <laughs> you know, he was he was staying in a very ordinary way, keeping his books around. People wanted to throw him out of the out. They asked Prabhupada, Prabhupada said, no, keep him. Later on, the crazy Peter becomes Kushakrita Prabhu the number one translator of Sanskrit books of Goswamis. Right? So if you wrongly judge people, judge not for thou shall not be judged. So let us be busy judging ourselves. Let us be busy minding our own business. Uh, let us be seeing that we should not cast the stone. If Only if we have not sinned, you can, we have the right to cast the stone. Only if we have no faults for ourselves, then we can judge others. And, and today on this auspicious day of Snan, we have practically no time, so we will not speak anything further. Today also is the Tithi of Mukunda Dutt, uh, Appearance Day of Mukunda Dutt. And uh, Mukunda Dutt is the personality who taught us patience, that famous story that I will meet him after uh, millions of lives. And he was jumping, uh, so that is a beautiful. So while we, we have, while we are being patient, let us really learn this beautiful art of not being judgmental and uh, being very, very spiritual in our dealings with everybody. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. I will not take questions. Granth Rashi Mahat Bhagavatam ki Jagat Guru Srila Prabhupada ki Hitai Gaura Premanandi